Hi guys, it's Ray here from Man City Fan TV. We've got Fulham in the fourth round of the Carabao Cup on Thursday evening and I'm going to do a preview video here with Dan from uh, Fulham Focus. So thanks very much Dan for providing your questions and answers to us. My first question, you guys spent a lot of money over the summer. Have any of your new signings impressed you? In terms of signings I've been impressed with, there's only really the one. And when you consider that we bought 12 players over the over the summer, we, there really should be more. Uh, but that player's been Maxime Le Marchand. Uh, he's proved himself to be a very good uh, left-back and centre-back. And whilst you know no player has really stood out this season, I think that he's come in and you know fitted best in, in fitted best into our system and you no know, it's, it's not been a great start but he's been sort of one I, I want to say shining light but one we we think we've got a player there that can you know be a game changer for us you know going forward okay Dan's first question is um are you happy with the start you've made this season and have your expectations changed since the start of the season well, in the league especially, we've got to be really happy with our start. I mean, we've had uh, eight wins and two draws out of ten league games. We've been away to Liverpool, we've been away to Arsenal, and we've been away to uh, Tottenham. And we haven't conceded any single goal against those three teams, and we've won two and drawn one. So, I feel very happy. I think last season we probably had more points, uh, a couple more points. Uh, but this season... I think there's a resilience and uh, you can see that by the fact that we've only let in three goals in 10, ga in 10 league games and we scored a hatful again. I think we're on 27 uh, league goals. So overall, I think the team does, it feels better than last season um, and hopefully we'll carry on uh, in the same manner throughout the rest of the season. Champions League, we had a bit of a hiccup against Lyon, uh, losing our opening groups uh, game in the, um, in the Champions League. Um, we got through against Hoffenheim, that could have gone either way, and we had a comfortable evening against uh, Shakhtar Donetsk. We top our group, we should comfortably qualify. So overall, you've got to really be happy uh, with the start of the season we've made. You guys are shipping a lot of goals in the league. I think you've let in 28 goals in uh, only 10 games. What do you need to change to stop this? First thing we need to do is get a consistent back line together. You now, if you want to have, you know, a back four or a back five or... No, I think I personally think we need to go with the what Gareth Southgate did during the World Cup. That's that sort of three, four, two, one, you know, however you see on a on a formation sheet. Um, but either way, injuries have been a major, major problem for us at the start of the year. You know, some of the changes have been tactical ones, but mostly they've been, you know, forced through us by injury so once we get all our injury problems finished and over with and honestly i think we need to go go to that system that three four that three four two one and get alfie mawson as a regular center back because even though he didn't have the best of seasons for swansea last year obviously being relegated i think there is potential there to be a very 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 good premier league center back so the more we see of him the better you can Fix the rest of the back line, however you, however you so desire. I think it should be Callum Chambers and Maxime Le Marchand uh, either side of him, with Fosu Mensa and either Joe Bryan or Ryan Sessegnon as the two wing backs. But once we get that the centre backs sorted, I think things are going to start improving much at a much quicker rate. Question two: How seriously do fans take the League Cup? Now, especially since we've got bigger fish to fry. Well, without wanting to sound arrogant, um, you're right, we do have bigger fish to fry. But I think as fans, we are, any competition that we can win, we're really happy. We've had uh, enough times, um, you know, if you go back 20, 30 years, where we've really struggled to, to even compete for any uh, trophy. So we're, as fans, we're just happy to win anything. And you're right, it's, we have bigger fish to fry. But I think as fans, um, we still value it highly. Um, it's a nice day out at uh, Wembley in the uh, end of uh, February, early March. It's good to get a trophy in, um, in the bag early, so to speak, early in the season. And even though it's the least of our, uh, let's say, four priorities, the four trophies that we could win, we're, we're all still happy to win it and we still want to win it. Question three. 
do you think you'll be relegated this season the way you're playing? And uh, can you manage your last season? I think if we keep playing the way we have been, I, I mean, the, the, ta- the league table doesn't lie. We're bo- in the bottom three for a reason. That's this style of play that we're trying to work. It it may have worked well in the championship when we were, you know, the big team back then, but we haven't quite made the step up to the Premier League that we thought we were going to. Um, and if we keep playing the way we have, absolutely, we're going to go down because you can't keep conceding the amount of goals that we have and expect to... That if we were if we were losing, or if it was high scoring at both ends, you know, 4-4, 3-3, 3-2, either side, you can then maybe make the argument that the attack can you know, overcome, overcome the bad defence. But the way it's been going, I honestly don't think so. In regards to Slav... It's the same thing. If we keep going the way we have been going, then eventually, come January and February, if we're cut adrift, then... Believe, and bear in mind that Slavis has only got one year left on his card. This is his last year. So it's not going to take the owners a lot of money to, to, to completely get rid of him. So when it comes to February and January, if they think, no, we need to stay up this year, it's a matter of, we're not going to do a Burnley, go, you know, come up, go down, and then create a long-term thing. If they think that this is our one shot to stay up, I think they're going to pull the trigger, and I wouldn't blame them in, in that situation because the money that we spent and the overhaul of the squad, if we go down, that squad's going to need a complete new overhaul, and it's going to set us back another four or five years, the same as it did the last overhaul when we got relegated in 2014. So I, I think Slav can... I think he can... But he needs to change the way he approaches games, both from the start and and his tactics and his tactics during the game. There, there's a smart manager in there, but I just don't think he's willing. I, I think he's just too stubborn to change his philosophy and to think, you know, this is my way. We're going to do it. No, you no, know, you know, live by the sword, die by the sword. No, I just, I honestly, just, I honestly just can't see it working out if we're going to play it this way. If he makes the relevant changes, then yes, I think we will. But something needs to change in order for us to stay up. Question three. Fulham are the only team to have uh, reached 100 points twice. City did the impossible last season by reaching 100 points in only 38 games. Do you think this will ever be replicated in the top flight by City or anybody else? Well, just to uh, put that in context, I think Fulham uh, got the 100 points in the lower divisions when there were probably more than 38 games. I think they're playing uh, over 40 games uh, in leagues, uh, in the Championship in League 1 and League 2. Um, but yes, yeah, City are the only team to have um, got 100 points in the top flight season uh, in 38 games. Absolutely fantastic achievement. I've said it many, many times. I can't see anybody um, getting to 100 points. It's so, so difficult. Um, and we only lost uh, 14 points. We only dropped 14 points in the whole season. You can't, uh, for instance, if you lose four games uh, in a season, well, you've lost 12 already. So it's going to be very, very difficult for somebody else to get 100 points. Um, can we do it again? Um, honestly, I think realistically, we're probably the, the best suited um, uh, team to actually get anywhere near the 100 points. Um, uh, target. Uh, um, I don't really see us doing it this season. I'd be happy somewhere in the in the high nineties. Uh, I think is a very very uh, good achievement. Um, Hundred points, extremely difficult. Question four: Do you think uh, Fulham will put out a strong side for the Carabao Cup, or is this a distraction from your priority of league safety? I think we're going to have to be a bit liberal in what we determine to be a strong side because I think it's going to be, with with the amount of injuries that we had in players coming back from injury, like Alfie Morrison still not 100% fit and Don Kearney still not 100%, 100% fit, are we going to go full reserve side or are we going to go full strong side? I honestly don't know how we're going to, how we're going to approach this game. If I'm being honest, if I was, if I was Slavisi Kanovic though, I'd... I'd put a weak inside out, I think. There's only so much you can do against Manchester City. There's no point running yourself ragged. Even against, you know, Manchester City are probably going to put out a weak inside as well. 
But even that, there's still some quality players in there. So it's no use running yourself ragged to try and beat these guys. You know, you've got to you know, lose the battle to win the war sort of thing. So I think I think we'll put out, a, you know, not weakened side as it were, with you know, a bunch of the kids in there, but sort of semi, semi-strength semi side. Question four. How do you see the game panning out? Well, I can see City making a lot of changes for this game, utilising some, some of the kids and some of the fringe players. And I can also see Fulham making a lot of changes too because, let's be let's be honest, the priority has to be the league, has to be uh, staying in the Premier League. And um, I can see uh, the Carabao Cup as, a, as an unwanted distraction. The focus is purely on uh, retaining that uh, Premier League status. Uh, having said that, even with um, our fringe players and kids, I think we'll be too much of a match uh, for Fulham. And I can see his winning... Uh, quite easily. Question 5. City will most likely play a mix of uh, fringe players and uh, kids against Fulham. Um, players such as Jesus, um, Brahim Diaz, Phil Foden, um, Muric uh, probably in, in goal but we've got senior players like Otamendi and company and Gundogan and Delph and Zinchenko. Um, how worried are you by City's kids and fringe players? Manchester City's backup players could very, very easily um, finish in mid-table in, in the Premier League. They are just that good. You look at how well, you know, the first team's doing, but then you look at, you know, what they have in reserve. You know, for instance, I'll take the I'll take the two centre backs. Um, it was John Stones and Laporte on Monday night against Spurs. You know, if they're going to get rested, who's going to who's going to be coming in? It's Vincent Kompany and Nicolas Otamendi. Now, regardless of what Fulham side and go, know what side we're going to put out. There's no way we're getting past that back line. And then if you want to go into midfield, you've got you know Gundogan and Sane and Phil Foden and Gabriel Jesus and a whole bunch of other players that you know, they may be backups, but they're going to cause us you know, countless countless problems. Which is why I said earlier I wouldn't bother putting out a first string side and running yourself ragged, maybe even risking injury. You know, pulled hamstring or a pulled injury because Man City are not, you know, a physical side. They're not, not like Cardiff or anything. You're not going to get any, you know, broken legs or anything like that. You know, physical damage is going to be it's going to be tissue damage if anything. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't put out a strong side because of the quality that Manchester City have in their backups. Even if you want to go even deeper to, you know, to the academy, there's fantastic players that Manchester City have come come through their academy, and even the. Somewhat even French players you don't know. I'm a big fan of Zinchenko, for instance. Uh, I know we were linked with him either in January or in the summer, one or two. I'd have gladly gone for him because I think he's a fantastic player. He was, he's probably going to get some game time on on Thursday. So, yeah, whoever Man City pick out, if they put the no, they're not going to pick the first team, but whoever they decide to go for are going to give us you know countless problems. So, no, there's a, there's only so much you can do when you're up against a terrific outfit like that. And Dan's fifth and final question is: uh, Can you predict a lineup for City and a, a score prediction? Well, I think uh, the actual lineup is actual toughy. Uh, it really does depend on how many first team uh, players uh, that played on Monday night will play on Thursday. I really don't see why any of them should. Um, you know, they need a rest, and we've got another big game, uh, Premier League game at the weekend, and I'd rather they were safe for that game. So. As I, as I said before, I think it's going to be a mix of uh, kids and fringe players. So let's go through the, the, the each position and see if we can work something out. I expect us to go 4-3-3 with uh, Muric uh, in goal. I think he needs to play and obviously he's the backup keeper so he, he needs to, to get in there. Whether we keep um, Edison on the bench or put uh, young uh, Grimshaw on the bench, I, I, I'm not sure. I can see it being Edison just in case something happens uh, to Muric. At right back, we could go with young Luke Bolton, who went on our tour of America and he played really well. Uh, or we could go with Danilo, who's just coming back uh, from injury. Um, I'll probably go with uh, Danilo for his experience. Uh, Centre-backs, we've got Company Notamendi, who can just slot in. But I think we might just see Garcia, if he's available. Uh, he's only 17 years old, this kid. And he's a fantastic uh, talent, a fantastic prospect. And uh, Pep was very glowing in his praise of uh, young uh, Eric Garcia. 
uh, on our tour in America. Uh, I think he said he played like a, uh, a player of 23 or 24 years old. He, he was that good uh, on that tour. He was fantastic. So I'd like to see, if he doesn't start, I'd like to see him at least on the bench and maybe getting uh, a few minutes on, on the pitch. It'd be fantastic for his experience. At left back, uh, I'd obviously rest Mendy. Uh, I'd probably go with uh, Zinchenko. It's a toss-up between Zinchenko and uh, Delph. Uh, if they're both fit, I'd go with Zinchenko. Uh, and the reason being, I'd play Delph at uh, defensive midfield and let, uh, obviously, Fernandinho have a rest. Uh, so there's my call for defensive midfield. That's uh, Delph. Um, the next, um, alongside uh, Delph, um, I think I'd have Phil Forden. I think you've got to have Phil Forden. Uh, you know, games like this, you've got to be playing... Uh, players of his calibre, the kids, they've got to uh, come through uh, somehow. Uh, so I definitely have uh, Phil Forden. Um, there's a case if Gundogan's um, back from injury, uh, he could be playing alongside uh, uh, Forden and um, my defensive midfielder of uh, um, Delph. Uh, up front, I think Gabby Jesus uh, screams out that he's going to start. Uh, Leroy Sane and Brahim Diaz, uh, I think that's probably what I'd go for. Uh, I think we've got one or two other players that you know you could uh, consider. I think Sterling's got a rest. I think Mahrez has got a rest. Um, KDB, you could look at him starting uh, just to get some more minutes in his legs. Uh, but I'd probably, um, I'd probably leave him on the bench and maybe bring him on later. Or, or not even include him at all. Because, I mean, that team, uh, that lineup, should be more than enough uh, to beat Fulham. And finally, question six. Can you give us a score prediction, please? Score, it's... I'm, I'm a realist. I'm not... There's no There's no point doing anything special over this. It's probably going to be 3 or 4 nil by half-time. Um, I, I, can maybe, I can maybe see us getting one from a fluky corner that comes through a misplaced back pass or something like that. I can't see us you know, scoring anything from open play or, or anything like that because Manchester City are just... Too good for us, you know. Good, too good for our first team. And when you can say, I think we're going to put some, you know, fringe players out there. That's just going to cause. That's going to cause even more problems. So, three or four. It's probably going to end up five. I'm, I'm going to say five nil. If I be, if I be brutally honest. There you have it, guys. That's our preview. Uh, look forward to the game on Thursday evening. If you're at the ground, please come up and uh, say hello. Uh, get on camera and get your views and uh, points across to, to the city fans. Uh, many thanks again to Dan from Fulham Focus. Thanks very much for your input, mate. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on Thursday night. See you around, Blues.